So, Michael Knowles recently debated Pixie on the issue of abortion. Oh boy. This ought to be fun. This is going to be great. Make sure also, I'm going to put this here, that you guys go and subscribe to this channel, PV Spotlight, where you can catch all kinds of really cool clips from different debates, uh, different videos, different segments, including soon to be some clips and segments from me, yours truly, that's right. So make sure you click that link in the description and go subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any uh, of their content. Now let us begin. Um, so I think when it comes to uh, feminism, uh, some something that a lot of feminists fight for is abortion rights for women. Uh, so I think I'd like to touch on that for a little bit. So a good jumping off point for each of you, what is each of your basic stance on abortion? We'll have you guys go first, then we'll have Michael respond. Yeah, I have very mixed um, feelings and thoughts when it comes to abortion. I am generally speaking pro-choice. Um, do I think abortion at any stage is moral? No, not necessarily. However, I do have strong um, reservations about the government being able to dictate um, when exactly, <laughs> or like just deciding like, oh, like let's have not have any pro-choice, pro-life all the way. I have like very strong reservations of the government being able to dictate um, a law to that nature. So I have, I have a Yeah, see, I, I've, I already went over this briefly earlier, but I used to kind of be of the same opinion, but I feel like I'm becoming more liberal on the issue of abortion. I'm still doing a lot of thought myself. I, that's why I'm, I'm always very hesitant to take a really, really strong stance. Although I definitely would be considered pro-choice at this point. Uh, absolutely. Because I don't know if, I, I don't know if I would actually consider a, a, like an early abortion, like an early, like when the majority of them occur. I don't know if I would even consider that a moral wrong. Uh, because you are, in that case, preventing a life from beginning you're not ending a life you're preventing that life from really ever beginning but then again that's going to come down to the philosophical arguments around well what exactly is life does it just mean that this thing is quote unquote alive on a scientific basis i mean tumors are technically alive on a scientific basis that doesn't mean that it's a life so there's a lot of of nuance there regardless though even if you were a pro-life person even if you were super anti-abortion, it still would make way more sense for you to be advocating generally pro-choice uh, policies because pro-choice policies, progressive policies, this includes widening access to contraceptives, which in turn reduces abortion rates significantly. Um, do you believe in contraception? I believe it exists, but I would strongly discourage it. Even for married couples who want to like child plan? Yeah, I think couples should be open to life. Even though there's no, like, I think married couples should be wait, open to Even life. though there's like an overwhelming amount of data that suggests that contraception lowers like abortion rates, basically, right? If well, a person I, I never don't, gets pregnant. Yeah, I think it, people should have more babies, and once they conceive the babies, they should also- Just have more babies? This guy's an idiot. What? I like also how the Republicans don't do jack shit, by the way. Uh, for like the working class or for the economy, really, they mostly just kind of like dick around about trans issues and, and culture war stuff. So rather than actually providing like school lunches for all these kids that they're saying you should have, no, they're saying you should go and have all these kids. And then when the kids are born, fuck you pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Oh, you, nothing's free in life, Johnny. Okay. Like this, this is the common Republican thing. Have babies, have babies, have babies. Okay. Then what? I don't know. Also, not murder the babies, but I, I yeah, I don't. Wait, so you okay, think married couples should just have, every time they have sex should get pregnant, or should be aiming towards getting pregnant? You know, believe it pregnant? or not, it's actually it usually doesn't work quite like that. But I think they should have more kids. Yeah, totally. Why? And th they're also, by the way, there are um, four. Uh, again, it's morally controversial, but there are uh, modes of mm -hmm. a, a more natural process that would be able to quite accurately yeah. time a woman. Until we're cycle. at the okay. point where we're getting rid of abortion, then are are, are you? then in favor yeah. of contraception no well, I, I also lives. i also reject the premise that you've just made which is that contraception reduces abortion rates i think this guy's just insane how would more kids be a benefit if somebody is is able to and that's what they want then they'd probably be really happy having more kids if that's what they want if they don't want that then why would just having more kids help them in any way why should they do it you realize if they don't want to have kids and then they have kids anyway because it's the right thing to do they're going to end up hating the kids and then the kids are going to have a really shitty life 
Not to mention, he then rejects the literal facts. Each year, about 50% of all pregnancies that occur in the United States are not planned. A study by investigators at Washington University reports that providing birth control to women at no cost substantially reduces unplanned pregnancies and cuts abortion rates by 62 to 78% compared to the national rate. The Contraceptive Choice Project enrolled 9,000 women. Okay, so they might say that that's biased, so I'll pull a different one up too, just in case. Here's another one. The abortion decline between 2008 and 2011 was driven by a steep drop in unintended pregnancy, which in turn is most plausibly explained by more and better contraceptive use. New evidence contradicts arguments by abortion opponents that the 2008 to 2011 abortion decline resulted from more women carrying unintended pregnancies to term because of state abortion restrictions or because they chose to do so on their own accord. These findings have major implications for the U.S. Much of the same happened in February 2014. There's a study finding that the U.S. abortion rate had dropped 13% between 2008 and 2011. Given that birth rates had also declined substantially during that time, the authors hypothesized that fewer women were experiencing unintended pregnancies. So, literally, this is just the truth. He's just saying it's not true. Think, you know, there's a very easy way to cherry pick those data because you can, you know, you can say, well, in this very small subset of data uh, where we give uh, condoms to college kids or whatever, they have lower abortion rates. But broadly speaking, over the past 60 years, we've had a. Yeah, we actually saw it nationwide. So, oopsies, sucks, sucks to be an idiot, Michael proliferation of contraception and we've had a proliferation of abortion the rates have spiked and they've lowered it sometimes but they've remained fairly high and the reason is more fundamental than statistics which is that we have a uh, mentality now that sex can come without consequences and so condoms can be very effective and whatever yeah, wait that mentality exists because we've made that possible like <laughs> you realize that you you used to not be able to fly without consequences right and then Airplanes were invented, Michael. Now, humans can fly really quite safely. There are very few consequences involved because we've made it that way. Why? This is like saying we have this notion that now you can just fly without consequences. Well, I don't think anybody should be using airplanes. It's like the, the, the non-consequence mentality comes from the advancements we've made like women put inside themselves and what, that can be very effective too but sometimes it's not and by accepting the mentality that sterile sex is a right it uh, it then implies a right to kill the baby so you don't actually have to face yeah. the consequences when it happens i think i push back on that yeah face the consequences like that's what i mean is is getting pregnant shouldn't be a punishment for sex it should not have a consequence now a life altering thing that can f you financially for the rest of your existence are you just extra retarded today idea that like people were not having sex prior to contraception because uh, they I never suggested that. Okay, I, I thought it was suggested because when you're saying like, oh no, abortion rates have gone up <laughs> since contraception. Yeah. I'm not sure if they, that's true. They were having kids <laughs> before <Okay>. contraception. <laughs> and they were also getting abortions. And no. people were stuck having kids and women were miserable and unhappy and getting pregnant meant it was the end of your life pretty much. No, I mean, you know, the other reason why it's, I think, silly to try to separate these two uh, phenomena is they occurred basically at the same time. So you had legal abortion beginning in 1973 with Roe v. Wade, though it had been legalized in, in other states prior. Uh, this was, you know, the 1960s and 1970s, the sexual revolution, when uh, contraception became much, much, much more popular and available, and abortion did at the same time, too. So it's simply a fact. As contraception became more popular, the abortion rate went up. At least to my understanding, um, and maybe we can even search this up right now, um, people did have abortions or did have a high rate of abortion before even like Roe v. Wade what would happen is that they were like more like back alley abortions, illegal abortions, such abortions that like basically put the mother's life in danger. So, uh, no, none of that's true. They, they were having abortions. Uh, it wasn't at a particularly high rate. The rate spiked after Roe v. Wade. And it is true sometimes women die from back alley abortions. There's a, a fake statistic that went around that was cooked up by the abortion industry, which said that thousands of women a year were dying of abortions just before Roe v. Wade. Dr. Bernard Nathanson, who was the head of NARAL, the Abortion Rights League, admitted it. They just made that statistic up out of thin air. And it, we can fact check it. All right, let's go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so this guy was a guy who became anti-abortion and then started claiming that they were lying about the stats. Okay, let's, let's... In 1979, so after his conversion and becoming super anti-abortion and everything, 
Uh, he published a book, and in the book he claims that he and other abortion rights activists had falsified statistics in their arguments for the repeal of the ban on abortions. He produced the film, so it's just he just claimed to be lying. Like, is there any evidence that it was false? Yeah, I don't know. Um, there's definitely, like, he definitely made the claim. And it, we can fact check it because we have the statistics from the CDC. So the year before Roe v. Wade made abortion legal nationally, uh, do you know how many women died of back alley abortions? Um, I don't have a specific number from the top 39 of 39 is the number. And, and do you know how many women died of legal abortions? 24. And so almost the same, but you'd say well, it's a little bit higher for the illegal abortions, except that if you look at the number of states that had legal abortion versus illegal abortion, if you control for that variability, it comes out to almost exactly the same number. And it was a very, very low number. So, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a, that wouldn't be a recommendation of legal abortion. To my understanding right now, if we decide to, like, like to take a state or a county where one county has um, a greater amount of contraceptive access, and promotes it more, um, teaches kids about contraceptive use versus a county that there isn't that necessarily same level of sex education, the one that has the less amount of sex education, contraceptive of access would have higher amounts of abortion. Do you dispute that? The one that has higher, did you say that the one that has higher rates of sex education would have higher rates of abortion? No, the one that has higher rates of sex education and higher rates of like contraceptive use will have less abortions than the one where there is no sex ed. Basically, places that have less sex ed have yeah. higher abortions. Well, it sort of, it depends. Yes, that's, this is absolutely true. I like how she's just throwing him such easy ones. Be like, hey, what would you think about this, hmm? Is he going to talk about abstinence-only sex ed? Because if he does, it's going to be so, so funny. It depends on if we're talking about a, uh, a community that is uh, strongly discourages contraception and premarital sex and abortion, uh, that would be uh, less likely. If uh, we're talking... Yeah, see? He literally said it. If you had a society that discouraged sex, uh, premarital sex, Herder. Okay, then how come right here? Using the most recent national data... This one's from 2005, so I'm sure there's newer ones now. But this study, we show that increasing emphasis on abstinence education is positively correlated with teenage pregnancy and birth rates. This trend remains significant after accounting for socioeconomic status, teen educational attainment, uh, ethnic composition of the teen population, et cetera, et cetera. These data show clearly that abstinence-only education as a state policy is ineffective in preventing teenage pregnancy and may actually be contributing to the high teenage pregnancy rate in the U.S. Well, another one from Science Direct. Teaching about contraception was not associated with increased risk of adolescent sexual activity or STDs. Adolescents who received comprehensive sex education had a lower risk of pregnancy than adolescents who received abstinence only or no sex education. Here's another one. The state with the highest teen pregnancy rate is Arkansas, and it's also a state that does not mandate sex education. There are three different studies from three different places, all reputable and uh, peer-reviewed, that literally prove you're wrong, Michael. A community that has very low rates of religiosity and low rates of getting married, but also low rates of sex education, which is just kind of li uh, liberal sexual revolution teaching, um, then maybe you would have higher rates of abortion there. I, I don't dispute that right. at all. I mean, we live in a culture now that is broadly um, supportive of abortion and of contraception, including religious communities. But if you, you know, to use my own uh, group of religious people, if you look at Catholics compared to the rest of the country, and then if you look at traditional Catholics, you know, guys who like the Latin mass and smells and bells compared to regular Catholics, the rates of divorce plummet, the rates of abortion plummet, the rates of contraceptive use plummet, the rates of childbirth go through the roof. And so uh, I, the reason I pick that group out more than the others is they seem to have all of the pieces that I'm talking about here. Um, and just where people have a lot of babies, that's your only goal? Just babies? Whereas others, they might have one, but not two, you know, or they mm -hmm. might have three. And, and uh, so there, it's, it's much harder to compare. How do you make people more Catholic? Well, you know, I'm doing my best, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, you are. I'm doing my very but best. If it, if it doesn't work, what's your plan B? So just a religious society that has lots of babies, that, that's his big goal? That is the dumbest goal. And, and it's such a, a lack of nuance. Are the people happy? Do they want to have babies? Are they happy? Are they satisfied with life? Are the kids living a good life? These are all things that you would want to consider. If you want to support the channel, please consider becoming a member today. Members get early access to videos, access to all the stream VODs, and exclusive access to emotes as well. So if you'd like to support the channel, become a member today.